what's up guys? Welcome back to The Money Is Show. And this week we have a special guest on the show that flew all the way in from Hong Kong. It's a long flight. But truth be, he lives half in uh, uh, Hong Kong and then half of his time in the beautiful Arizona, in Scottsdale, Arizona. He's here to teach us about leadership. Uniquely enough, uh, Lance uh, Tanaka here uh, has been doing coaching consulting for over 20 years now in some of the top uh, Fortune 500 companies that exist. Companies like McKinsey, JP Morgan, uh, Credit Suisse uh, Bank, Deloitte. He does coaching and training consulting for their high level CEOs, executives, vice presidents on leadership. He's got a couple philosophies that he lives by that's universal to all these different ones. I'm gonna take the Fortune 500 leadership that he teaches. I'm gonna to try to bring it to you, the entrepreneur, the business owner right now. I know you're not doing 50 billion a year, but the leadership principles are the same. So on that note, Lance, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, Andrew. I look forward to it. We've had a great conversation. Uh, you have so many leaders, entrepreneurs, CEOs uh, in it. And it's funny because your pedigree, your background is what most of the people that I work with a lot with uh, that are coaching and training are trying to get to working with these uh, Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 100 companies uh, that, that you work with. I named a couple of them, Deloitte, McKinsey, uh, JP Morgan, Credit, Credit Suisse. Uh, you've done over a thousand different clients in the, in the 20 years. Um, uh, what, how did you get into that level of training and consulting where everybody's trying to get to? Yeah, well, first of all, I've been blessed. I'm, sure. I'm very lucky, but when I first started off, it was tough. You yeah, know, it was difficult, and uh, you know, I set the target that I only, I really wanted to work with those companies that were in the top ten in, of their sectors or, or industries, uh, and so I just started figuring out who those companies were, and then looked at my network. Yeah, and say, what is my current network? How do I get introduced to somebody who can introduce Dude. me to somebody who can introduce yeah. me to somebody? And that, uh, that's where it started. My first client uh, was Deloitte. Wow. And the second was Daimler. Wow. Uh, and so, you know, yes, incredibly blessed. Yeah, 20 years of coaching these massive, massive organizations. Um, what's the longest kind of, sometimes you go in and it's just for one person for one time. Sometimes you go in and it, you end up staying for uh, a while. What's the longest kind of contract term, if you will, that, that you've gone through with someone like that? But that's the reason why we chose the top, uh, top 10. Okay. Because it didn't want to go in there, you know, parachute in, do one executive, gone. Yeah. I wanted to, to create a relationship with that organization because mm. as a coach or as a consultant, the more you understand that culture of that organization, mm -hmm. the more effective you can be as a coach consultant. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I said Daimler, I, I'm still working with Daimler. So that's wow. 20 years. 20 years you uh, still work with them. Deloitte, 20, 20 years. And, Last count, uh, worked with over 200 wow. uh, partners at, uh, at Deloitte. At Deloitte. But that's what we want to do is we want to create a relationship. So that means there's some companies that we're not going to work with uh -huh. because I can't, you can add only, only so much value when you deal with one person. But after you've learned who, who's who within the organization, the culture, the gold standards, and you work with 50 people in that organization, it gives you great insight mm -hmm. into how it operates. And then you can be much more impactful as a consultant coach. What made you, what made you, I know your, your background is from Pepsi-Cola yes. and Nike mm -hmm. to obviously Fortune 500, 100 companies. Uh, I know you were in their international, running international divisions for them and vice presidents of different uh, divisions. What made you leave a really great companies, Pepsi and, and Nike, to go on your own in 2001? What made you make the shift? I'd say the reason why I was successful in those companies uh, was not because I was so brilliant or I had this great vision. It's because I understood people. I understood how to find the right people, how to develop them, how to motivate them, how to inspire them, and how to, to get them to work together as a team to move in one direction. And that's why I was able to do these turnarounds and these acquisitions within those companies. And so when I was 35, I set a 10-year target, saying, I'm going to uh -huh. retire 45. I had no idea what that was going to be yet. Okay. But you know, through that 10-year process, I started realizing that my strength and my passion was around people. How can I get people to change? Okay. And it's not, you know, some people say, oh, you're just so nice that you want to work with people. That, that's not my motivation. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I want to help people to change, to make real change. Uh, and that's why I was successful then. So I figured, well, why don't I create an organization or a company around that and really focus in on that? Let's talk about change for a second. Um, 
uh, sometimes change, uh, people hate change, people love change sometimes. Um, there's a, there's a, a, a question that says, can, can, a, can a person, can a human, can they really actually change who they are, how they act? Mm -hmm. um, and with all your coaching consulting, can, can someone, and I'm gonna stick in business, right? Not, I'm not talking about life in general, but in business, can someone, can someone change or are you going in understanding their strengths, their gifts, their abilities, and then having them uh, use those to higher levels? What, how, does that, how does that work there? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's an interesting question. It's a multifaceted question in that what, one of the things we're trying to help leaders be is authentic. Mm. And I know that word just gets mm. bantered Diluted around and... all, over the, uh, all over the place. But for us, what we mean by authentic is be the leader you were designed to be. So that part of that is DNA. Sure, absolutely. Right, that you were born with it, or you maybe you were it was nurtured in you, but it's you, mm -hmm. right? And so that's an important, really, foundation for for a leader to be able to figure out what that is. Now, when it comes to change, there are certain things that will change and certain things that won't. You're not going to change your DNA, right? I mean, if you have this certain passion about something, it may manifest itself differently throughout life, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. We don't want to change that. We want to. It's a fire that we want to keep, you know, feeding. Right, right, right. But there's other aspects of change. Is that there are certain maybe weaknesses or things that are getting in the way yes. of them achieving what they want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And it's probably in their DNA. It's a weakness for them. Mm -hmm. They can change. You know, mm -hmm. one of, one of the uh, principles we have is you can teach an old dog new tricks. Okay. You know, because this this I think it's a misconception that older people like me <laughs> can't change. No, it's far from the truth. It's harder. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a lot easier if I learned this when I was younger. Uh, but you can change, and it comes down to motivation. So what we do when we're working with executives, and the hardest people to change are executives. Yeah, sure, right? absolutely. They're successful. They've been doing this for the last 20 years. I'm going to do this mm -hmm. for the next 20 years. Right. Uh, and so it's a combination of one, is identifying what their strengths and passions are and use those to manage around their weakness, mm -hmm. to improve it. Yeah, There might be some weaknesses that we just decide, it just doesn't make sense. It's gonna take way too much effort for you to do it, so we call that manage around it. Okay. The best way to manage around it is hire somebody who's <laughs> good at it. Sure, uh, hire, hire your weaknesses uh, is one of my greatest things that I try to do every time I turn around is find a weakness and go hire someone's <laughs> strength as my weakness. Uh, but it didn't. It didn't. I didn't go through that until later in life. At the beginning of it, when I was in entrepreneurship, I always tried to just fix my weaknesses yeah. constantly. Yeah. And it was such a struggle and a and a headache in my life because exactly. I was spending all my time on something that I wasn't good at. It was not in my DNA at all. Yeah. Right. Um, where, like you said, there's certain things that I can, uh, I can tweak, I can adjust, and I can I can be good at. And there's other things that are just, they're never gonna come to fruition for me and I'm just running my head to a brick wall over and over again. Exactly. And it's what's stopping me from any type of real growth exactly. inside exactly. of it. What I wanna do now is I wanna, I wanna give, I want you to give us some examples. I know you've written three different books here and uh, this newest book that you have, Dream and Achieve, um, you have eight, um, you, you refer to them as challenges and the eight challenges are in this book right here called Stories from the Top. These are what you refer to as universal leadership challenges. That doesn't matter if you're a startup company, mid-tier, manager of a company, uh, a CEO of a company, a partner in a company. These are universal challenges that anybody in any type of leadership role is gonna, is gonna face, uh, is in this book, Stories from the Top. This book, which is your newest book, uh, takes the number one challenge that you refer to uh, as a leader, and this one's called Dream and Achieve uh, book. And then this is their, uh, this is your first book, Yes. The first book you wrote yes. called uh, Ten Year Garden. So really quick, uh, if anybody wants to get a copy of these books, first, where's the, where, where can they go to get a copy of the books? Well, they could either go to my website. Okay. They're all there, or they can go on Google or Apple, uh, all the you know all the major book companies, you know Barnes and Noble. And they can get it either an ebook or a printed book. Uh, a, a, a hard copy or hard copy book, physical yes. copy or a digital a digital copy. So really quick, talk to me. And your website is Lance Naka Group. Dot com. Correct. Lance Tanaka, just your first last name, Lance Tanaka Group dot com. Uh, talk to me about the eight challenges. If you can, I don't know if this is possible, kind of roll off what are those eight challenges? Um, uh, not describe them, but what are kind of the eight challenges that leadership's face? Okay. 
Hopefully I can remember this. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to cheat. Uh, the first and the, the biggest one is the one that we see over and over as we're working with executives, even success, uh, successful executives, is this whole thing of being authentic. And again, yeah, that word gets bantered around, but it's can I be the leader I was designed to be? Mm -hmm. Not the leader that I want to be, not the leader that I want to copy somebody else's great style, but I got to figure out mine and become that. Mm -hmm. That would be, you know, the, the, the number one challenge. Uh, next one is around get a life. It's, okay. it's people tend to be victims. They say, well, you know, there's a glass ceiling or there's this or this, that, and, you know, I came from the wrong neighborhood or I don't have this great network. Yeah, I mean, it's accurate. There probably is truth to the to the barriers. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do anything about it, if you wait for somebody to give it to you or you wait for the government to hand out something to you, you're never going to get out of there. Mm -hmm. And so that second challenge is around how do I t take control back? How do I stop being a victim? How can I start making the changes or the adjustments that I need to do to, 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 uh, to be successful? Another one is around uh, um, leadership without authority. Okay. Too many people try to lead based on their title. I'm the president, yes, so yes. you need to listen to me. I sign your check. You need to follow it's what like I the, say. Uh, I'm your mom, so I said so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Leadership style. Exactly, and that's that's a, a very poor uh, uh, way to mm -hmm. to lead. What uh, what we work with leaders on is how do you get people to want to follow? Mm -hmm. How do you get willing? followers? How do you influence them without your title or without your authority? And that can mean up, that can mean across, that can mean, mm -hmm. uh, that can mean down. Yeah. Another one is around, we talked about uh, that you can teach an old dog new tricks. For us to develop, we always have to break some bad habit or create a new one. Mm -hmm. And so this, uh, this is a key challenge. Another one is around attract, develop, and retain performers. Now, I underline that word performers because a lot of companies look at, say, for example, turnover and say our turnover is too high. <coughs> to me, turnover is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. But if your best people are leaving, that's a problem. Right. And so what this uh, challenge is, is about how do I get the right people mm -hmm. into my organization? How do I develop them? How do I inspire them? And how do I keep them from leaving you know, and going uh, going to the competition. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one because a lot of your performers, they're always looking for growth. They're always looking for a new challenge. They're always looking for uh, something to take on, something to create. And keeping high performers, as you know, is extremely difficult in, inside of leadership. It is. And too many people fall into the trap of, I'll just pay them more. Right. It doesn't work because right. somebody will always pay more. Mm -hmm. Someone always has a bigger wallet <laughs> exactly. than you have, right? In, in fact, we look at research. We do, uh, we, we do a lot of research, and there's three basic things performers uh -huh. want. Not employees, but performers. One, they want to be challenged, mm -hmm. meaning they want to be stretched. Do not micromanage these people. Give them opportunities. Let them grow. You know, um, uh, Challenge them. Second one, which is a really interesting one, is recognize me. Yeah. And this is one that a lot of leaders don't do. And what the research shows, uh, there was a, a, um, a Gallup mm -hmm. study. I think you've probably heard about it. They called it a Q12, which is these, it, 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 if you ask your employees these 12 questions, if they score high in it, you have, there's a good correlation between high scores and performers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you, you attract performers, you scare away non-performers. Non this question number seven, is in the last seven days, have I received recognition or praise? Wow. In the last seven, seven days, days. That's once a week. Right. I mean, how often d does a performer really get praise or recognition a couple times a year? Mm -hmm. They need it constantly. And so if you think about it, it's actually very easy to come up with reasons to appreciate or show recognition to a yeah. performer. You could probably do it every day. Right. So this is something that a leader must must learn and, and build a habit into it. And then the, uh, the third one is develop me. And that's the big one is develop me, develop me, develop me, coach me, train me, uh, spend time with me. And whenever we do uh, work with executives, we're constantly adding, uh, getting feedback from a 360. We're interviewing people. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about people that are uh, reporting to them, it's always this. Spend more time with me. Coach me. Performers want to be developed. 
sure. want to be coached. They naturally have that. Mo- for the most part, most of them that I've ever worked with are very coachable. They're looking for growth, personal growth. They want to say, what's another angle, perspective, tool that I can use to exactly. keep growing in my wherever, whatever phase they're in. They're constantly, that's why they're performers, because they're constantly trying to develop exactly. and grow. And as a leader, I could totally see how leaders don't play into that and, and don't give them a new tool, a new way to go about something. There's no training there, so they get very bored and they say, I, could, I, need, to, I need to grow. I'm interviewing someone, actually today, they're coming to their second interview, and literally the reason, it's a lady, the reason that she's leaving, because she's a performer, is exactly that, is that she had no way to grow, not in up in the organization, because I asked her that question, like, grow up? And she said, no, I, I just couldn't grow as a person. There, I couldn't develop yeah. who I wanted to be, and she was leaving now. Yeah. Very, very unique. I want to go to the number one, which is in this book right here that you wrote, uh, the number one, per, uh, number one challenge. And the number one challenge that you, you talk about inside of leadership is purpose. Is, is, am I saying that the right way? Yes. Is purpose. Let's talk a little bit about that. When you, when you talk to a CEO or an entrepreneur that, that's, that's uh, you know, growing, a, a manager, someone that's in a leadership role, what do you mean by purpose? Purpose is this idea that you're, you're on this earth for a reason. Okay. You're, you have this DNA for a reason. You were, ra- you were you're born with this. You were raised with this. Uh, it's trying to figure out what that is. Okay. Because too many people don't really look inward. Mm-hmm. They tend to look outward and say, okay, what do people want from me? Mm-hmm. What kind of leader are they looking for? And, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that, but you need to take your focus more inside and say, this is the kind of leader I want to be or I, that I should be because this fits my DNA. This leverages my strengths, my passions, my experiences, my values. And you've got to live that mm-hmm. because, you know, you know, as, this, as you said, I've worked with over a thousand leaders. You'd be in, amazed how many of those people are not happy. Mm. They're successful, they're influential, they money, they're making lots they of friends, money. friends, houses. Right? But, but there's something's missing. There's mm-hmm. a hole inside of them. And so what purpose is, is not only figuring out the DNA, the, the you know, strengths, passions, values, and experiences and leverage it, but it's also to understand what we call north. And that's one of the one of the one of the principles mm-hmm. is too many people are looking for what we call true north. Okay. Saying if I want to know what to do with my life, this is exactly it. Exactly where this is the title, this is the place, this is exactly what I'll be doing. The problem with that is that's really hard to to define. In fact, you may be searching your whole life and you'll never really quite understand what true north is. It's also only one option. Yeah. That's it, right? Or what happens if you achieve it and you discover, well, it's not exactly what I thought it would be. Right, right. Right? So, and the biggest problem with True North is people won't move. They won't take action because they're waiting to find that answer or getting that voice from the sky saying this is it. All right, so let me, let me repeat this back to you. From, so as a leader, right, leaders, obviously we want purpose, right? And so if I'm saying this back to you, a lot of times as a leader we think what is our true one purpose that we have, that we were born to do. Um, and if I'm saying this, say this right way to you, you're saying uh, a lot of times leaders will get stuck there because they're trying to search this one tr- one thing that may or may not they ever even find in their life. Right. They may find it and it's, it's, it's not what they thought it was. Uh, they were actually off on it. They spent the last 20 years pursuing it and then found out, wait a second, that wasn't even it. Um, and because they, they can't sometimes put a, their finger on it, it enables them uh, to not move basically exactly. and they get stuck where they're at because they're so focused on finding this what you call the the, the true north star if you will right. they're looking for right okay I can see that yeah for sure so what we're trying to do is get people to understand north just north not true, true north. north because okay. you could be 12 degrees west that's still north mm-hmm. you know, 13 degrees east is still north and what we want to do is help people populate what's in north mm-hmm. and what we found most people for most people it's somewhere around seven to nine I have mm-hmm. nine. Okay. And if I can understand what those nine things are, then I have this always in front of me. And so as I'm making my day-to-day decisions or my monthly decisions or my career decisions, I'm doing it against nine criteria, not one. Okay. Not one or two. Are you saying nine purposes? 
It's, it's what, what I call elements, elements to find your purpose. North is purpose. Okay, North is purpose. Right? But, it's, but there are different as, um, facets mm -hmm. of it. And again, most people have somewhere between seven and nine. Could you, if you don't mind, could you give me uh, the viewers an example of either what one of a couple of your nine are or what you see a lot of people have that are in their seven or nine? that it, yeah. sometimes are common denominators to a lot of them. Yeah. What, what would you say some of those seven to nine elements are? Okay, for me, the number one element is around be the go-to, go-to guy to create impact okay. for a person or an organization. Okay. The second one is around mentor, influence, coach, consult. And are these elements, if I was reversing roles here and you were coaching me as a CEO, are these seven to nine elements what you help pull out of the CEO? Yes. You help them define that. Yes. You know, you just said, I want to be the go-to um, uh, uh, creator for impact. Yes. That's something that um, you would help the CEO create that verbiage and pull it out of them. Yes. And that's what that, that process of dream and achieve. It's a 90 day process. Okay. It's a very effective process to help you identify what those nine are uh, in it. Now you were asking what, what are some things that you find in all people? One element is always around finance. Okay. Yeah, and it's, finance obviously is important for everybody. Even if you're not materialistic, but, you know, we're all materialistic, but even if you aren't or you want to find a greater truth, finance is still always going to be an important aspect of your life. So you better figure out what that is. Another one that's in everybody's north is relationships. Okay. And what we do is we don't say, oh, these 20 relationships, it's too hard to impact 20 relationships. We, I get you to identify three. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. These are the three most critical, important relationships in my life. And I'm going to have to focus in on developing those three or what's a missing relationship or what's a relationship I need to repair. Mm -hmm. a, a third one that's in everybody's is health. Okay. It's around fitness. Uh, when we work with these executives, it's amazing how many are in really poor health because they've been so focused on getting that title or, or moving up the organization and they've ignored their health. Well, I'm 65 now, and once, once, if you ever hear 70, 80 year old people, or even 65 year old people, we're always talking about, oh, my back hurts, yeah. <laughs> my knees, my knees hurt, my, yeah, 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 right. And uh, and so it's very important to understand what that health aspect. But if you take those three plus, I no. have six others. Now you have this this direction. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to move in that direction. I can move this way, and then maybe next month I can kind of go this way, and then this way, and I still never know what true north is. But what I'm doing is I'm getting more and more of those nine into my life. Mm -hmm. And little by little, I'm pushing out, delegating, deferring, delaying the, the things that I'm not good at, mm -hmm. the things I really don't want to do. Little by little, start pushing it out and start pulling in these nine things. So you're saying as a leader, when they when you establish the seven to nine elements uh, that are there, the goal for the leader is to uh, use those seven to nine elements more in their lives, get get those seven to nine elements more involved, uh, more activities, more focus on these seven to nine, which by doing that kind of naturally pushes out these other ones that you may have in your life that you realize these are not what your life is about. This is not what you want to be about. In there, have you ever found someone that in in your all your research and studies and in consulting, have you ever found someone a leader that has twenty elements? <laughs> Does that exist? I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure. I've I've never I've never faced that, but there's necessarily uh, there's nothing necessarily wrong with having sure twenty. The thing that you have to get around is that you cannot. Let's say you have zero to ten. Ten meaning you sure. have a great deal. You can't have 10 on all nine or all 20. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. It just isn't possible. Mm -hmm. So you always have to manage kind of balance about I need to work on this this month or this year I need to focus on this, but you cannot ignore any of them. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have 20, maybe there might be some that might be a certain hobby that's not so critical. Okay, maybe mm -hmm. you can ignore that. But if you get these eight, nine, 10 elements, you can't ignore any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but the weighting probably changes throughout your life, but you need to have them all, and you need to figure out a way to integrate mm -hmm. uh, amongst them all. So I, I think we were talking about earlier before before the, uh, the shooting, is that um, that um, you need to understand that it's 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 kind of this balance, 
and the weighting again, you know, may change, but it's important because these things very rarely change. Those nine things are probably not going to change. That's what it sounds like. Those, these nine elements are more what I refer to in life as my DNA. You, you mentioned DNA earlier. This is what I was created for. I, 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 I'm, I, I can't get away from these nine things. That's exactly. what I want to spend my time on. Sometimes when you're, I think if you, if you don't know what those, in your example, uh, uh, nine elements are, is when you start bringing in other stuff that should not be there exactly. and you get as a leader sidetracked and you're now doing this thing over here and spending time on something that you shouldn't be and you'll find frustration very quickly. Exactly. And, and you'll find frustration, even if you have success in that thing, you'll find frustration somewhere on these nine because you gave up time, energy on one of these nines and it began to die that you actually really cared about exactly. because you went into this thing over here, even though you found success in it, you're, you're still frustrated as a leader because you know internally something's off. Yeah, because that one thing mm -hmm. that's, they're all important, right. is missing. Right. It's a whole. Yeah. Now, the other thing that this process does, and I, I created this process about 15 years ago and it's just evolved. Uh, and there are a lot of great tools out there that will help you identify your nine. Mm -hmm. But I think this does, this, what I call drills down, which is let's look at those nine, let's figure out the who, what, where, when of mm -hmm. all of these things because what that does that now gives you specificity so for me you know one of my elements was coach people or, or uh, you know consult coach people well I got to know who do I want to coach what do I want to coach them on where do I want to be doing it when do I want to be doing it and as you understand that that gives you a lot of clarity mm. around what that is and it brings you to the next step which is it allows you to take action because now it's more focused. It's more focused. So like you could take relationships. I'm assuming, I think you said, or I can assume relationships has to be one of the nine for a yes. lot of people. Yes. Um, but then it goes a step further. It says, okay, but who do you want relationships with? When do you want those relationships? How do you want those relationships? And where do you want those relationships? Exactly. As you define or answer those questions right there, it now puts you, puts you in a position to take action where you need to inside of it. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And then that's where impact occurs. Because a lot of people want to know their their north mm -hmm. and maybe they identify their nine, but because it's not specific enough, it's not actionable. Mm -hmm. And because it's not actionable, then people just sit back. And that's not what we want. We want people to actually do something about it now. Mm -hmm. One thing that we do is in step three, we, we have them develop, once they figured out the, the nine elements, the who, what, where, when, then we have them identify uh, a three month action plan. Saying, here's what I can do in the next three months. And so they populate it. And then we get them to do what's the three day mm -hmm. action plan. So what we're trying to do is get them some bigger ideas and start getting down to things that I can do right now. Mm -hmm. And that starts moving me into the northerly direction. Yeah, so if we role played here sure. and get, did, did an example, um, I'll, I'll stay with uh, relationship because it seems to be a common one. So if I chose, or not chose, but if I went through the who do I want relationships with, it sounds like I would then try to name out who do I want to have relationships with in my life. I mean, I, I want relationships with these people in my life. Someone uh, like me that has a lot of friends and so forth, family and business associates, can you can you have a lot of relationships or is it more well really what we're talking about relationships what i mean by that is a more defined term of relationship or is it a broad stroke of relationship it could be broad uh for you you're wired differently you're wired in the standpoint that you like networking you like mm -hmm. working with people you like uh, uh, meeting people mm -hmm. That's a key element. I would kind of maybe separate that from the relationship one. It, okay. I mean, it is relationship that, related, sure. but that means you need to build your life, your business around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The The relationships we're talking about is, yeah, there might be 20, 100 that you need to develop that you would like you know, like to uh, uh, further, it, further it, but it, it's too hard to take action on 20. Yeah, I can't I saying, get you to do 20, yeah. but I, I can get you to do three. Mm -hmm. And if, if we can at least start with these three, let's make sure you prioritize them right now, get movement, get action, and then you'll start seeing the results of that. You'll start seeing, wow, this relationship is getting deeper, it's getting better. Then you can always you know, spread that out. You can always you know, increase yeah. that. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I'm thinking, man, relationships, that would be, I, I, I have like all these names, faces <laughs> running through my head right now. Uh, and I agree with you. I think I, I would separate those off because that's just part of my business life of how my business runs. We talk relationships. I think you're referring more to who are my, my, my parents, my, my partner, my children, my uh, um, people that are going to be super, my sisters, my, my brothers that are super important to me, whether I'm successful in business, losing in business, uh, have, have, whatever, it, I have these relationships. They're very important to me, no matter where I'm at in life. That's what you're re referring to with more or less relationships? Yeah. When you talk about those? Yeah. Well, and, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get it into the what we call the urgent quadrant. Uh, uh, Stephen Covey did this mm -hmm. uh, book, First Things First. It's one of the, uh, I think one of the seven most highly, what uh, that book, right? Seven, high, seven Habits of Highly Successful, highly successful people. people. It's one of them. It's First Things First. And one of the things, it's a good book, but again, I think it's like two or three pages like that. that are really good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's basically this, is that when you figure out what you're going to do today, it's based on two variables. It's important not or not important, urgent mm -hmm. or not urgent. Mm -hmm. So let's say you draw two axes, urgent, not urgent, important, not urgent. So then you have four quadrants. Mm -hmm. There's a tendency for all of us to spend all of our time in the urgent quadrants, the two urgent quadrants, because that's how we're wired. You know, email, phone calls, we just got to do it. This, it's what they call quadrant two. These are activities that are important but not urgent. Mm. This is the dangerous, dangerous yeah, quadrant. Dangerous zone. Because this is, this is your north, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? It, you don't have to do it right now, but it's really, really important in your life, health, long-term plans, mm -hmm. all those things are in there. And what we're trying to do is get people to identify what's in that quadrant, but then by making them go from a three day, three month three to month a three, to day, three day, or choose three relationships or one relationship to repair or one that's missing, what that does, it forces it from not urgent to urgent. Mm -hmm. And then we want you to start scheduling it mm -hmm. into your life. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's great, great advice. I mean, I mean, uh, just as a leader, I'm thinking. I always look at it from a personal standpoint, from a viewer standpoint. And it's like, man, how how long did I spend looking for a true north in my business career, in my life, and and so forth? When and I and I can think back while in my mind as a leader, I was justifying um, failed other pockets. Uh, you call them elements, I'm gonna say, but failed other quadrants, elements in my life that were failing. Um, because I was like, oh, I got to find this, this, this thing, this, this, what am I created to go do? When in reality, uh, these nine elements are what's super important to me. They are what drives me. They are what is north of me. Now, is there a point that these nine can then tie into this one uh, thing that created do? I don't know, maybe. But I'm also starting thinking, but what does it really matter? If, if I have these nine elements of relationship and finances and community, whatever the nine uh, that you have, that, that people create, that because that, that, they're for them, right? I don't know, I mean, it seems like it kind of defines what life is for you as a leader, are those nine things. Whether you have that one true driving thing or not, these nine are you. Exactly, you could be a coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not certified. <laughs> but just from a leader standpoint, it makes complete sense. And I love it how, because I, 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 I'm a visionary, but I don't do 10 year visions. Um, uh, very rarely, I, sh I should say that I do that, just because I think so much, so so much of my, uh, again, just getting started entrepreneurship. I look so far down the road. So many things changed and 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 tweaked, and, and it's not even remotely close yeah. uh, to what it was. And so I, I'm more of a even on a big year, big plan out. I, I try to stay no more than three years out, mm -hmm. and then bring it out to one year. Uh, so I go three to one, and then I go to the quarters, and then to the month, and then to the Week and days, sure. and um, and in in your model there, I love that you're going from three month to three days. What's a three month goal, and what's a three three days that I can go accomplish? Because I think so many times leaders tend to live too far out mm -hmm. and not close enough to reality, and right. and because that it also gives you a way as a leader to um, justify non action because you're like, well, that's that's. I still, I'm working on it. It's, I'm busy. I'm it's working. It's 10 years, I'm but I'm, I'm going to get to it <laughs> versus when you, you start pinning it down and yeah. saying, okay, but what, what do you want to change in that relationship in three months? Yes. How do you want that relationship to grow in three months from now? 
How do you want that relationship to look in three months from now? Great. Now, what can you do in the next three days to start putting that on the path of that three month goal? Right. Way more actionable, way yes. more doable, way more achievable. And it puts you, it puts you in, in, in the um, uh, position that you're either going to go, you, could, you can have accountability now because you're going to see it, that you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. Anytime you're too far out, it just, that's what I'm saying, it just gives you this justified weasel way out where it's like, oh, it's still good though. And I love how you did it with three months and three days versus three years, three days, you know, yeah. or in three months yeah. out. I love the three months and three days uh, inside of it. What a great truth. I mean, so these, this is one of your eight challenges that all leaders face. Mm -hmm. I know underneath that you have your 11 principles that you teach. Um, I know we don't, we, we're already running out of time now, but inside those 11 principles, um, just so the, the viewers can understand, those 11 principles, um, are there 11 principles for each of the eight um, challenges, or is the 11 principles help solve the eight challenges that are there? Yeah, it's those 11 principles in some combination okay. may be needed to handle that, that one challenge. Okay. For example, one of, one of the uh, principles is, is around that motivation is key. Okay. And so if you want change, you want people to move, including yourself, you got to be motivated and mm -hmm. you got to really tap into that because change is hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to always come up with a reason not to do something. Right. You're looking for it. So you better figure out what that motivation is. So that's one principle that you need to have in, in some of these challenges. But another principle could be around focus. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's another, that's a key one that we, we see over and over and over again. People have a hard time focusing because the world is so complex now. Mm -hmm. Business is so difficult now. Mm -hmm. It's nothing's easy anymore. And you're getting stretched in all these, all these directions. So we were talking about one of the challenges is get a life. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the, one of the principles of getting a life is you better focus. You got to figure out what, what really is critical. Another principle is around small steps. Mm -hmm. So you got to, you got to, it's a combination of some of these things to be able to address that challenge. So if you can understand the principles, that's really, really critical. You don't really even need to know the eight challenges. If you can understand these 11 principles, it, it shows up and transcends a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Where are the 11, what book are the 11 principles in? In the stories. In the stories. So a Dream and Achieve will not have the 11 principles. No, there'll be some of the principles for, for that one using. challenge. Gotcha. Right. But if you want to know the eight challenges and the 11 principles. This is the book that has all of them inside of it, uh, it. inside of it. Um, very, very interesting, man. I, I just as a leader and, and, and I, I, I would spend the next week with you just talking to you, uh, which is probably why people pay you so much money to consult and coach them. Um, last question I have for you, uh, for, the, for the viewers here, tell us a little bit more about, you know, where do you see yourself going right now? Um, you mentioned you're 65 right now. You've created this great company. It's an international company. You got coaches, trainers in, in multiple countries. Uh, uh, top five, Fortune 500 companies are, are, are working with you. Where do you see yourself going from here? Yeah, we were talking about this earlier. It, it, I guess it's more around the term of legacy. Mm -hmm. Is that it's not that I've got these amazing things that I came up with. Everything that's in that book has been around forever. Right. Right. We were, we're they talking, all, everything yeah. is marketing. It's all been around. Yeah, the leadership books coming out every day. They're just repackaging or mm -hmm. reconstituting. Uh, where I want to go is I've, I've been able to get to these very simple, practical, you can do this right now and change your life, improve your ability to delegate, improve your ability to, to motivate people. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to, to, to die with me. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to bring that more to the masses. And you, know, and you are so gracious in saying who I work with. These are the top tier companies. Yeah, they're the top, right? top. Well, I want other companies tier two, three, four, small, medium enterprise, to understand what McKinsey did. Why, why is Daimler so successful in, in these leadership things? Mm -hmm. Why not offer that to the rest of the, uh, you know, rest of these organizations and done in a very simple, practical, I can do this now. That, you know, that's my direction now. Yeah, I mean, I, you, know, you know, when you look at these other companies that, that you've worked with uh, uh, in the past and currently still today, these companies spend an amount, they have a budget set up for trainings, education, 
uh, leadership, uh, uh, so forth, that they that they use throughout their entire organizations. And and it's a big budget. I mean, some of these have massive seven figure budgets built in to to help do these things. And then, like you said, when you when you which is great if you're at that level, but then you have these other companies that that you, you, there's an entrepreneur and he, he's at twelve million dollars of revenue right now, and he's got twenty employees. He does not have a one million dollar budget to go create a, a, a for his staff to have a leadership training or a management training, whatever it may be. And so to get the principles to the to the to groups of people that really, really need, I mean, because the principles are universal, yes. whether you're at JP Morgan or you're at entrepreneurial uh, year one of your company, the principles are what's universal, right? Yes. It's just that sometimes these companies like JP Morgan uh, have the budgets to go implement and, and have these trainings and other organizations don't. So it's, it's a great way to get your knowledge out, uh, especially because you, you're in a unique position of having all the case studies, research, content of 20 plus years of training and coaching these Fortune 500s to bring it, bring, I don't wanna say bring it down, cause it's not down, it's, no. it's, it's just bring it to another sector, another group of individuals that aren't that Fortune 500 and they're not even trying to be the Fortune 500 for the most part um, and to allow those universal truths to get out. So very interesting, man, and, and, and great truths. Uh, eight, eight challenges and 11 principles. Now I have to go cancel tomorrow's plans and read two books. <laughs> So I got to figure out what other, how they all work right now. Uh, uh, Lance, let me ask you this question. I want to sure. talk to you about this. Um, uh, inside of here, this is a picture of Lance. I'm going to have you fill this out right here and then sign it right here. And then me and you will talk about your uh, answer. Okay. I'll give you the Sharpie right there. Thank you. I have to do one word. So there's actually a couple words in that money is a means to, but I'll put what it's the means to. Okay. Without saying means to. Is that okay? All right. Absolutely. Okay, so let's round this. All right, here we go. From Lance Tanaka at the Lance Tanaka Group. Uh, Lance says, money is a means to purpose. A means to purpose. And I love it because it actually deals with your uh, uh, number one challenge that yeah. leadership face yeah. is also purpose. Yeah. So when you say money is a means to purpose, what does that mean to you, money is a means to purpose? Well, to me, money in and of itself is not important mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. What money does, it gives me the freedom, it gives me the options, it gives me the opportunity to be able to help people find their purpose. Mm -hmm. So, as I said before, money is an important thing. I'm not driven by it, but I still want it, sure. <laughs> right? right? So I need to have enough some mm -hmm. level to figure out what that is. And the interesting thing too is a lot of people come to me saying, hey, I want to become, I want to get out of the corporate rat race and I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they don't really have an understanding is finance. Mm -hmm. They don't know how much money they spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they really don't. They don't have a budget and they don't really know how much, say, for example, net worth do mm -hmm. I need to have for me to take this risk, uh -huh. you know, to give up my corporate life and, and, and do this. So, Money is an incredibly important means. And so uh, what I help people try to understand is why do I want money? Mm -hmm. Not money, but right. why do I want it? Is it because I want to buy things? Is it because I want, for me, I want, mm -hmm. you know, I want freedom, uh, control to be, you know, to, to, to do what I want. So I think that's important. Yeah, because at the end of the day, when you have money, and, and we're, saying that we're, we're saying all the same stuff because money is never the, Money is never the purpose of business. It, it can't be the purpose of business, right? Uh, or, or in life, money cannot be the purpose of life. You will, you will live a miserable, miserable life if that's what you're going after. However, it is important to understand that with uh, when you when you do have money, um, it can allow you to achieve your purpose uh, in a deeper way, in a deeper sense. It can allow you to help achieve your purpose when you have money. Money opens up doors that wouldn't be there w without it, right? Um, you talk about purpose being one of the eight challenges uh, that leaders face and the nine elements that are there, one of them being relationships and, and family and, and having money, having money or not, not having money does not mean you'll have a healthy relationship or an unhealthy relationship by any stretch of any imagination. Um, but I was thinking about in my own life, just recently I took my whole family to our family vacation in, in Florida and, and and we're in a big beach house and and I take everybody and I, I I pay for the whole thing and and 
money is what's giving me one of my purposes is family relationships and money allows me to create an experience exactly. with my family uh, that if I didn't have it, I, I wouldn't be able to create that experience and, and talk about what we do and, and, and plan for it and so forth. And it allows me to fulfill one of my nine elements, which is one of my purposes, which is family. Yeah. So that's why I think money is important. It's just misused a lot. Um, people, especially they start off in entrepreneurship, they, they, they don't understand what they're they don't even understand finances in general. Mm. All they know is like, I just gotta have money. I gotta have money, and and that's a that's a horrible road to to live by, on that on that process. So, Lance, I, I love having you today in my office. I, I I truly hope to spend some more time with you, and 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 I, I hope you can get the the eight purposes, eleven principles that you have established over the last twenty years to this entrepreneurial uh, um, building class that 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 desperately needs it desperately needs it and I think you have the the knowledge to go get it to him and there's some great truths there again if you guys want a copy of his three books um, stories from the top dream and achieve and tend to your garden uh, you guys go to lancetanakagroup.com and get a copy of his book uh, remember Lance's answer for money is is uh, money is the ends uh, the means to a purpose uh, that is there I appreciate you guys watching the money is show this week we'll see you next week on the money is show